to get an internship as a new UX designer, you need these four things. And if you're constantly applying to different internships, but you are still not able to crack any of them, then that means any of these four things are missing. So if you just fixed all these four things, then you will definitely get an internship. Okay. So now let's look at all these four things. First of all, we have the skills. Second, we have the work or portfolio. Second one is the frequency, like how frequently you are applying to jobs. Like if you are applying to 10 jobs a month, you will not get an internship internship okay then we have the communication like uh, communication is for the interview round like if you have all the required skills uh, work experience or your portfolio is good and you got selected in a job interview but you still got rejected there then the main reason is you don't know how to communicate yourself like how to sell yourself how to present your work like if i ask you what is design thinking can you explain that you know what design thinking is but explaining what design thinking is to someone else is a different skill okay we call that thing presentation skills or communication skills now let's look at all of them one by one okay so first of all we have the skills now in skills we have two things knowledge and practice now knowledge means how well you know about your ux design do you know all the design principle design guidelines and do you know how to use tools properly that comes inside the knowledge do you know how to create user flows how to conduct user interviews how to uh, iterate your design what is the correct way of iterating our design if you know all these things and all other important and required things of the design then your design knowledge part is good but knowledge itself is not enough you also need to practice because without practice you will not go anywhere because if you know how to generate a color palette but you have actually not generated a color palette on your own without any plugin like if you if i give you a color let's say if i give you a purple color can you create a 10 step color palette on your own without any external plugin or a website we have okay can you generate a color palette inside figma on your own if you can do that well and good okay so now let me show you a graph i have seen a lot of designers who make these mistakes let's take an example of a person like this is person one he practices a lot but he has very less knowledge like he's not reading about design he's not watching videos related to design topics so this person is practicing a lot but his knowledge is very low so in this case this person will not go anywhere so you have to avoid being a person like this second person we have is he has a lot of knowledge like he watch a lot of youtube videos he read a lot of vlogs and documentations but he's not practicing enough so this person will also not be able to crack internship because he or she will not be able to understand and how design work properly because you need the combination of both knowledge and practice to be a good designer or not just designing in any field you need the combination of both the things knowledge and practice or we call that thing experience also like the proper work experience okay so you have to be like person three who constantly increases knowledge and practices a lot i have seen a lot of new designers like they have four or five projects in their portfolio but the project is not that much good they don't have enough knowledge like how to even start a project like what the first step you should take or what is the final step you should take or how to create a presentation so to be a good designers and to create good designs you need both knowledge and practice okay now let's look at second thing which is work or your portfolio now portfolio may include two things your quality of design and your presentation like how well you have presented your design let me show you an example of portfolio or case study so that you can have a better idea okay here i have a case study so if you just look at details as a designer you should focus on detail so if you just look at the landing page uh, like one good thing is the heading is clear step into the future of smart homes so i can just understand by just looking at it oh, this is related to something smart home applications but if you just look at the details the dynamic island or the floating pill is overlapping with the designs and they have used the iphone mockup but i don't know if they have designed it according to the human interface guidelines or apple design guidelines okay so you should avoid using iphone mockups if you have not designed according to or for apple according to apple's design interface guidelines or we call that thing hig or human interface guidelines so avoid using iphone mockups if you have not designed for iphone that's a big red flag in your case study if you are not using the correct mockup mockup is also very important uh, so now let's scroll we have the project overview target users and if you don't know how to design or build a ux case study i will create a separate video for that how to write your first case study as a ux designer okay so we have target audiences design processes if you just let me go to the design part now here we have the wireframes and if you just look at the wireframes and their actual designs they are exactly the same and this is showing that they have not created the wireframes in first place if you just look at their onboarding screen like this the first screen second screen third screen they are exactly the same as they have created in wireframes this shows that they have not created the wireframes in first place first they created the designs 
then they created wire frames just for the sake of the presentation they just converted their whole design into black and white and they just removed all the elements like everything is same pixel by pixel it see the whole point of creating wire frames is just to get an idea they are not your final designs and you can clearly see that their wire frames and designs are exactly same which is a red flag so please don't include fake wireframes if you have not designed wireframes simply don't include them okay it's a big red flag okay if i was a recruiter i will reject this portfolio by just looking at it okay this is a fake wireframes we have they just convert their whole design into black and white there are so many plugins which can do all these things so you should avoid doing all these things okay uh, let's look at another case study we have if you just look at this case study like if i just scroll here let's look at the details you should always look at details again she is using iphone mockups i don't know if this was designed according to human interface guidelines or not if you just look at the design we have a cutout in the design also like if you have not placed this thing inside a mockup there is no point of placing cutout in here okay. either place this thing inside mockup or remove that thing completely okay if you just scroll down here here we have the user persona i don't know if she actually used this user persona because i see a lot of design like this is not the only case study they include user persona but they actually never use that thing in their design process they just created a fake user i don't know why because user personas are created based upon the data we have of the user you cannot create user persona out of your assumption that's not the correct way and if you are creating user persona you should show how you have used that data like if i am looking at the demographics we have like if the age is 25 she is a freelance front-end developer unmarried los angeles or bios or main goals we have to ensure optimal care for the plant she wanted the app to provide real-time information about each of them so if you have used all these data in your design process then this makes sense otherwise don't need to do random things just to show them to look fancy the your senior designer will reject them by just looking at it okay like if i just scroll down here we have the designs again a big red flag because she has converted her designs into wireframes see the real wireframes are not that much detailed they are just a rough sketch to get an idea like how the screen will look like if like if you created a wireframe screen it will be a simple text here and a box here and another box here and you know that what that box means uh, if you show other person random things he or she will not be able to understand this real wireframes are not that much detailed so you should avoid adding wireframes just for the sake of it if you actually designed your wireframes then include it okay otherwise don't please it's a big red flag uh, and then we have the final designs and she just presented all her screen in a rotated way and you should not do this you should showcase your design one by one like how you designed this particular screen like if this is a my garden screen you should tell them like how you designed this thing how you came up with this idea otherwise there is no point of case study you have now you should always show the glimpse of your final design in the landing page we have like the hero section of your case study you should always show the glimpse of your final designs in your hero section just to give them idea like this is what i created now let's look at the process okay let's look at another case study we have you just scroll down like this is i think this is urdu so it's a right to left design if you don't know we design everything from left to right in english and all other languages we have but there are some language in which we write from right to left so we design that thing accordingly okay so if we just look at the designs we have express corner delivery app case study log this is good actually they have clearly defined like delivery app but it would have been better like if they explained what kind of delivery they do okay can they deliver anything can they deliver a car okay so you should be specific but be precise like this was a good like if i show you where it was yeah this was a good ux copy step into the future of smart home like we can clearly understand like what this application means this might be something for smart home management okay so this was a good ux copy okay if i just scroll here okay we have the understanding delivery world okay then if i just scroll more and more and more yeah these are the real wireframes you can see that these this person actually designed the wireframe because in reality we designed wireframes like this okay so this is a good thing then we have the high fidelity wireframes again i don't know if these are real or not because they're looking so refined the real wireframes actually never look this much refined unless you have put in a lot of efforts which is not the case for majority of beginner designers i can see that okay so the whole point is don't include fake things in your ux portfolio and focus on your design details like in this case she just overlapped the mock-up with the design so you should avoid these type of things 
as a designer you should focus so much on details i will leave the link for some good case studies in description okay now let me show you where you can create a portfolio like like this was just a glimpse of case study or mistakes we do commonly okay now let me show you where you can build your portfolio now to build your portfolio we have obviously behance so like this website is called behance if you don't know about behance we can post long form case studies here okay so we have behance dribble and medium so you can use behance and medium to write your ux case studies okay uh, behance is a, a whole image oriented and in medium you can write and include images so you can use either behance or medium to write case studies but i will recommend you to write your case study on medium like explain everything in detail with a simplified version and create a presentation like a separate presentation of your final design so that's a very good approach to do that okay create your complete case study on medium and you can show your final designs or only designs on behance okay this is a good approach but you can create your whole case study on behance that's not a problem i just prefer that you should create a pure case study on medium and show your presentation on behance okay and aside from these thing you should you can create a personal website or you can create a notion site these things are optional like this will give you an edge okay but if you have these three things these are enough okay? but having a personal website or a notion website is an advantage and if you don't know how to build a notion website or a personal website like there are so many no code tools like framer wix webflow wordpress you can all use all these things we have and there are so many platforms which can create your design portfolio like if you just search for no code websites or no code website builder for designers you will find a lot of website okay you can do that and you can also create a notion website and if you don't know how to create a notion website just google it yeah. it's not that much hard okay next thing we have is communication before that let's look at the frequency like if you apply it to 100 jobs then you will get a replies from only three that's the ratio so if you are applying to 10 jobs a month you will not get hired that's a very low chance so if you should just sit down daily and apply to 20 30 internships daily only then you will be able to crack a good internship if you just sit down daily on your laptop and apply to 20 30 different internships daily okay that's a good ratio because every internships get hundreds and thousands of applications to increase your probability or chance of getting selected you should apply to 20 or 30 or, and you can increase this number that's up to you how much time you can put in applying to internships but you should apply to 20 to 30 internships in a day to increase your chances of getting selected because even if your work is very good like even if you are the top candidate for that position like you are the best candidate for that position but a recruiter might not look at your profile because they have already selected a candidate so to increase your chances you should apply to more and more internships then you will definitely get a reply so don't don't expect anything if you are just applying to 10 internships in a month you will not get replies their chances of getting replies are very low now let's look at the communication part let's say you got selected in the interview round now this is where majority of people fuck up they don't know how to give interviews because majority of you don't have enough experience to present yourself or to sell yourself you know the stuff but you are not able to explain it to other person that i know the stuff okay so this includes two things understanding and explaining whenever you are giving interview you should not speed up your answers you should just sit down you are not in a hurry the interviewer is not in a hurry if you are there asking something sit down take one minute then answer no one is saying you to answer the next second they asked a question like if i asked you why you use a four pixel grid system in your design take few seconds understand their question like what exactly they are answering don't try to answer the question instantly first understand the question what they are asking this is where majority of people fuck up they don't understand what they are asking and they are not confident enough to present yourself and to improve your presentation skills you can conduct mock interviews with your friend if you have any designer friend or you can get in touch with non-designer friend just give them these questions like google the most asked questions in interviews you will find a list of questions just give them to your friend and explain everything to your friend that way you will have a good practice of presenting your work and you should always practice before going to an internship because they are going to ask you about your work like all the projects you have did they are going to ask you questions about the project or you are presenting to them or if they have assigned you a task then they will ask you questions from your task okay and you should avoid lying in your interviews you should be confident enough to say something like yeah you can do a little over exaggeration but you should not stretch it too far because the recruiter will catch that thing instantly so you should be confident enough first understand what they are asking 
think then answer don't jump into the answer directly that we will get more nervous and you will fuck up your interview round okay now next thing is where you can find internships okay to find internship there are multiple platforms i have just listed three of them and linkedin is my favorite from all the different platforms if you have to get internships and job because on linkedin you can post your work like a instagram post and people might contact you if your work is good enough and they need a designer with your level of skills so they can contact you directly so that can give you an advantage because the chances of you getting shortlisted if you just apply to our job is very low because the recruiter might not look at your work but if you posted your work online and your work is good enough and they need someone with your level of skills they can contact you directly that will give you an advantage so you should always post your work online i tell this thing again and again because it's very important it can separate you from crowd and this will also build your network like if you have a big following you will have a very big advantage over other competitors or other candidates we have for applying for the same job so you should always post your work online on linkedin that will give you a very big advantage okay. so this was how you can get an internships first of all you should have the right amount of skills then you should have your portfolio because you cannot send your figma designs directly you should never send your figma design links directly although that might work in some cases but in majority of the time they will reject you if you send it them your raw design file directly you should always create a portfolio on behance dribble and write case studies on behance or medium okay and you can build a personal website if you can or you can build a notion websites that's very easy if you don't know how to build a notion website just google it yeah it's not that much hard okay next thing is you should practice your communication skills either talk to yourself record yourself like the thing i'm doing right now i'm creating a youtube video but you can record yourself on your phone you don't have to share it with anyone uh, you just have to look at your expressions how you are answering what is the tone how slowly or how much time you're taking to think just conduct mock interviews with your friend if you or if you don't have any friend just, just write down all the common questions people ask in interviews you can just google that like common questions interviewers ask in a ux design interview and try to explain that thing as you are explaining it to a real recruiter okay that way you will have a very good practice of presenting yourself in an interview because you might fuck up everything in interview if you don't have enough practice okay and next thing is you should apply to as many jobs as possible i recommend you to apply to 20 to 30 jobs every single day because the chances of you getting selected among all the applicants we have is very low because the amount of application we get is very high if you apply to 100 internships you will get selected to only three or four of them because the number of people applying for the same job is very high so this was how you can get internship and if you still have any doubt you can ask me in the comments i will answer as soon as possible and i will see you in next video till then bye